Hello everyone, my name is Kylan, and on behalf of the Lasso Lab Group, I would like to present on some of the work that we've been doing towards developing an optical truss interferometer for the LISA telescope. So the LISA telescope lies directly in the path of the long arm interferometer for LISA, and as such, the telescope structural stability has to meet the picometer per root hertz level at millihertz frequencies. One way to measure and test this structural stability is the use of an optical truss interferometer, or an OTI. So the OTI consists of three Fabry-Perot cavities mounted onto the telescope structure. And this can be seen over here on the right, where we have a head-on view of the telescope, and we can see the three cavities that are along the, the telescope structure. And below it, we can see a side view of how this might be done. And by means of pound driver hall locking or PDH locking, changes in the cavity length translate to changes in their corresponding laser frequency that is locked to the cavity. Now the locking scheme for the OTI, we have two target approaches for this. We don't want to use three lasers for each of the three cavities on the telescope. And one way that we can just use a single laser source is by sending a pre-stabilized laser source, coupling it into three different branches. Each of these branches has an AOM and an EOM, and the scheme of which is shown over here on the upper right. So the AOM is used to shift the nominal laser frequency, and we can tune this frequency, omega-1, in order to um, tune to the cavity resonance. And the EOM is used to phase modulate for PDH locking. And a secondary approach, which is being investigated currently by the University of Florida, is sideband locking, which is a similar idea, but it's a different approach. Here, instead of having an AOM and an EOM, we would have two EOMs. And similarly, the first EOM would be used to tune the frequency to the cavity resonance. And the second AOM reduces phase, mo phase modulation or PDH locking. Now, the, the, most of the work that's been done by the La LASSO lab has been on the development of the optical truss cavity. So two main cavity topologies are on, were under consideration, one being the plane concave geometry, where the cavity input mirror is flat, and the back cavity mirror has some curvature, where the radius of curvature is greater than the length of the cavity. The other geometry we're considering is the symmetric cavity, where the curvature of both mirrors are matched. And these two geometries lie well within the cavity stability condition. So one, the way that we wanted to analyze the pros and cons of either geometry is to use Finesse, which is a interferometer simulation software. And we use this to investigate the cavity response to mirror misalignment for various mirror curvatures. And uh, some examples of this analysis is shown here on the right. On the upper right is shown the analysis on the plane concave geometry, and beneath it is the analysis on the symmetric cavity geometry. So the main distinction to be made between these two graphs is the color scale. Now, while these two graphs look very similar, um, the scaling is actually different. So the power coupling efficiency when the color is at a dark blue on the upper graph, the power coupling efficiency is 0 0.3. However, down here, when the graph is down in the dark blue, the power coupling efficiency is 0 0.6. So with this in mind, it is easy to see that the um, the symmetric cavity geometry is better by about a factor of two, and it is more tolerant to misalignment of the cavity mirrors. And beyond this, we wanted to develop the OTC input stage. Now, the input stage consists of a fiber input going into a set of mode matching optics, and finally the cavity input mirror. And the idea that we wanted to go for was to have a sort of monolithic piece for the input stage that we could mount onto one side of the telescope while having the back cavity mirror mounted onto the other side of the telescope. So the first options we wanted to consider were for the fiber input. So we considered the option 
of matching a bare fiber into the cavity. And while the other option we considered was using a fiber collimator, where we would have a, a wider beam to match into the cavity. Now we used uh, three different softwares to optimize the mode matching solutions. We used JanNT, MATLAB, as well as ZMAX. And the mode matching solutions that we were able to find uh, for all the designs that we considered, we were able to keep the size of the input stage to two centimeters or less. And furthermore, we used MATLAB to analyze the response of the system to misalignment of the lenses. So an example of this analysis is shown here on the right, where we are looking at the coupling, the response of the coupling to the cavity due to displacing the lens from its nominal mode matching configuration. So the upper right here shows the, the response of the system without a collimator, and beneath it shows the response with a collimator. And as we can see, if we use a fiber collimator for the input beam, the system is much more tolerant to misalignment of the lenses. So adding those two results together, we would prefer a symmetric cavity due to the fact that it is more tolerant to misalignment of the cavity mirrors. And we also want, want to use a fiber collimator um, because it is more tolerant to misalignment of the lenses. So this brought us to a final design concept for the OTC where this is shown right here. Um, Another idea that we wanted to implement is coding the cavity input mirror onto the back of lens two. And this essentially decreases the degrees of freedom that we have in the system. So it is one less optical component to align. Now, once we had this idea for a final design concept, we wanted to go into a tolerance analysis. So the way that we would do this is by estimating a tolerance range for various misalignments throughout the system. And once we have a tolerance range for each of the misalignments and mismatches that we want to analyze, then we randomize these parameters and combine them and then run many simulations in this way to produce a sort of distribution in terms of the power coupling efficiency. And the di uh, distribution from this analysis is shown here on the bottom right. Um, Above it is shown an example of a misalignment that we're considering, where this is showing the angular misalignment of lens two. And so other mismatches that we're looking at is variations in the thickness of the lenses, uh, the radius of curvature of the lenses, as, as well as the separation between the lenses. And so another key aspect to this analysis is keeping a log of the randomized parameters for each run so that we can take a look at the cases where the coupling efficiency is rather low. And we can see which parameters we might need to tighten up and which parameters are more lenient for our purposes. And this analysis is continually being done right now using both Finesse and ZMAX. So to recap, we designed the Fabry Pro cavity unit based on mirror alignment tolerance and the design of the OTC input stage was done by analysis of different fiber inputs, as well as the mode matching optics and the alignment of, their, of those elements. Currently, we're working on analysis of manufacturing tolerances and the alignment procedure so that we can get a full picture of what we're trying to build. We are also in contact with the local vendor in Arizona for fabrication of a prototype, and we're expecting to have a working prototype of the OTC sometime this fall semester in between September and November of 2020. Uh, furthermore, next year in the summer of 2021, I'm planning to relocate to the University of Florida to continue my work on LISA telescope testing. So here's a list of references that I used in the making of the video. And I would also like to acknowledge the support that we've received from the NASA Goddard Space Flight Center, as well as the University of Florida. Well, thank you all for listening, and I hope to hear any questions or comments in the Q&A session during the symposium. Thank you.